There it goes. There what goes? The uh. There what goes? The live. The uh. There what goes? The live thing. Live. The uh. The live thing. Live. The uh. The live thing. Okay. Yeah. So. Also, I'm... I just realized something funny about Sean right now. And that would be. If you put a little piano over the interface where it shows his name, level, and gauge, it looks like he's playing the piano. <laughs> you know? That's an interesting either, thought. Either that or he's just going tiptoe, 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 tiptoe. <laughs> uh. Alright then, guys, welcome back to Twitch. Welcome back to the Kingdom Hearts 20th anniversary stream. Yes, welcome stream. back to Twitch. <laughs> anyway, uh, this is me, Black Cross, and I am here with NBC Chew, Mac Chew. I, I'm, I'm, I'm doing it again. Just call me Mac. Mac Chew. Okay. <laughs> I, I've been so used to just calling you Mac, so yeah. But anyway... Aside from all the tongue twisting, apparently that's a curse that all YouTubers and Twitch streamers share alike, where they can't even do a proper introduction. So before we dive into the next world, which is the country of the Musketeers, I decided that we were going to go ahead and just get a head start on making a couple of spirits, because we could still make a whole bunch. Would the tongue tying be a byproduct of the Let's Play curse? That could also be the case. So we'll first start off with Sir K. Rule. Have it you? Says Kairu, but Kairu. Okay, my bad. But have I you got? I want to now just call him K. Rule because of that. <laughs> All right, we'll do that then. Either that, or did we? I think we established in one of the last streams that this would be Meta Knight. <laughs> oh my God, he even has wings. It's perfect. So we'll definitely call him Meta Knight. So let's see. So that is metal, M but is meta. It's, it's metal without the L. Right. And it's knight spelled with a K. We'll see if we can put it with the space for now. It looks like you can. Oh wow, right on it. Alright, so Meta Knight it is. We now have the full Kirby crew. We just need to find something that'll match with Kirby. We could turn beans pink. That is true, we could. It's got the rubberiness of Kirby. So we've got this, or we can try going for random and seeing what we can make. After that point, we are out of ingredients. We're just out of the uh, different dream meters we could possibly make for the time being. Well, there's that one. I'd say we go with a random. Okay. We'll see what we can make and... Go from there. I don't think we've done randoms before. And well, well, whenever I say random, I mean like going through the pool and seeing what we have availability. Oh, what's that? That one's a cab, uh, cannon. Cap cannon. Cap cannon. Still can't make that yet. So far, we've got three different ones. So, it's not necessarily random, more so freestyle. Yeah. I say random because you're using random ingredients that would ordinarily, uh, wouldn't be in the main recipe thing. Okay. 
to which so far we have three different dream eaters we can make. Think four then, even though we can make something else in the process. Cyber Yog. Oh, we now have access to the chef one, which we agreed oh. we were going to make fries, right? Yeah, we were going to make it French fry to make in reference Lilo and Stitch. Okay, so far we got another one. Okay, so... I'd say we go for the one that we already have a name set out for. <laughs> okay, and that would be who? French fry. Assuming that we have the ingredients. I don't think we do. Yeah, we don't yet. Oh. We have Wondrous Fancy at the moment that still needs to be acquired, but let's see. We had that plant one that I was just finding. We got the uh, other... The cyber Yog. The we other two, the... Caboodle. Uh, cab 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 the ugh. Beetle. Yeah, the two other Beetles. And then I believe... Wait, there's three beetles? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, Does this that mean red one right here. The... Are we going to name that one Pincer then? We can name that one Pincer. We'll go ahead and make this one then. And then we'll enter in the world. Okay. Great spirit. We made a frog and food for the frog. <laughs> so let's see. I know it it's starts with a P, pin, but. And then it's S I R. And. S I R? Yep. Huh, oh, okay. Pincer. Oh, by the way, given the uh, announcements, I don't know when exactly you plan to play Scarlet at all, but I don't think I'm going to be able to cover getting you the DLC. <laughs> oh, no, it's fine. I was going to get the DLC myself anyway. Okay. Yeah. I just was surprised to see DLC so soon. I mean, they did the same thing with Sword and Shield. Yeah. Just to let you guys know what NBC Mac is talking about. Uh, he's referring to the uh, Pokemon Day announcements that they made today. Yep. Yeah. Aside from the DLC, the biggest thing that got my attention was the new Netflix series that was being made. Which is Pokemon Concierge? Yeah, Concierge. Yeah. And uh, the funny thing is, me and Delmar actually looked into it because we thought the animation looked it familiar. It's what, actually... is it made by the same people who did Rilokuma and Kamu? Yep, it's the exact same people. And I'm like, this one we gotta watch. Because we love the Rilakuma and Karu uh, series. We like the first season better I than... I never get that name right. It's... I guess in terms of J Japanese proper pronunciation, it could work both ways, maybe. And the fact that both of you have speech impediments doesn't help. <laughs> so yeah, maybe you're right, maybe I'm right. I'm not sure until we get a Japanese person online to let us know who's right and who's wrong. We don't know the difference. So we apologize in advance. <laughs> At any rate, though, let's go ahead and land right into the country of the Musketeers. 
We're entering the world of the Swords of Justice. Yep. The Pokemon. Shit. Fun fact, Cobalion, Terrakian, Verizian, and Keldeo are based on the Three Musketeers. Really? That I did yeah. not know. Cobalion's based on the leader. Terrakian is based on um, the... Uh, The hulking head strong one <laughs> and then Verizian is based on the more flamboyant one and then Keldeo is based on the fourth musketeer that the other three take under their mentorship ah okay So, is it established that this is the same Mickey, Donald, and Goofy that we know up to this point, or are they separate? Well, that kind of gets confusing because of what happens in a particular scene that you will discover. Because it's to assume it might be the same Mickey, Donald, and Goofy, but in dream form. But admittedly, the conf the most confusing part about it is the fact that, yes, you see Donald, Goofy, and Mickey there, as well as Minnie and Pete. But since this is technically based but on not a Daisy, I don't remember seeing a Daisy on it, which is surprising. Yeah, but what I that would have been the perfect way to introduce Clarabelle. That would have been. That would have been very good. But uh, what, what was very confusing for me the most about this segment, aside from, you know, seeing um, Yang says Tower and Mickey there, and it's like, that world ain't even sleeping. Why am I there? This one's kind of that same way, except you could also excuse saying the word that it's a different world since we didn't see many in Timeless River. So we could assume that we, if you had to stretch it, that is. We can assume that Mickey traveled to other worlds, found Minnie here, and right after they left the world together, this world fell into darkness and fell into sleep, thus continuously making the dream. It's, well, we can assume that, but at the same time, it's still a little confusing. Then again, like, you mentioned that Minnie wasn't in Timeless River. For all we know, Mickey could have been serenading her off screen. That is also true. Like I said, there's a number Just of ways... Like just like he did with her in the catnip cartoons. Yeah. It's just one of those things where it's like, we can't really well, say for sure one way or another what's right and wrong. But for the time being right now, we just have to marvel the fact that the Musketeers is in this one. Which arguably is one of my personal favorite cartoon uh, direct-to-VHS slash DVDs that they made in the past. Which I absolutely love. Then again, we don't get many uh, standalone Mickey movies, you know? Apparently, you can't do diddly squat. <laughs> King Mickey, are you okay? Huh? Have we met before? What? Uh, Sora forgot again. <laughs> Wait. Is this like what happened with Jiminy and Tron? But Wrong! I'm not that Tron dead. isn't the same one you know! No. Isn't one of the ones <laughs> Poor Sora. I don't get it. You okay? <clears throat> What's wrong? Oh, um, I was wondering where I was? I forget, was it explained Where'd you get to Sora to or Riku that this? the grid a was a replicate basis for Space Paranoids? I think it was explained more with Riku uh, segment than Sora's. Mickey, I'm working on a problem. That's why I'm in this world, being a musketeer. Hmm. So, am I in a world the king visited that I don't know about? A world that's trapped in sleep somewhere? Because I guess... Yeah, they did explain it after all. Okay. But Sora was just so dumbfounded he didn't quite fully put together. 
<sighs> Teapot's so big, we can barely see ourselves in these things. <laughs> Okay, I don't know what exactly those bird-looking things are called, but I just realized something that they remind me of. They're technically, I believe, either this one's uh, the Quaxler or the Goose one. Either way is a bird. I just realized what it reminded me of. Give me a second. Is it what I'm thinking it is? Because of the mouth? Depends. What are you thinking of? Um, that one, um... What are they called again? The, uh... Extraterrestrial creatures or whatever? The yokai? Yeah, I guess yokai creatures in Pokemon. It's not a Pokemon. Okay, it's not a Pokemon. That's a shock. I'm interested to see what you had in mind. Boohoo from Yokai Watch. Boohoo? Okay, you'll have to forgive me because I'm not familiar with all the yokai creatures. I'm only familiar with like the face value ones, but I've not seen like all of them. So let's. Have you got it posted? Yeah. Okay. I have definitely not seen this thing. Although to think that there is a creature like what we see. I'm impressed, Mech. Your knowledge... And, um, and like Pokemon and very much like the Dream Eaters, this also has texture swappings. There's Flumpy. Huh. And there's Squeak. Oh, okay. Interesting. That each one's a higher rank than the last. That makes sense because I see I see where it mentions the rank and everything. This color right here kind of reminds me of the uh, other one uh, that we'll be seeing later on. So we could all probably of them are f all of them are from the Eerie Tribe. The Eerie Tribe, huh? Interesting to know. Oh yeah, I forgot this thing's un is required to help unlock Dan Doodle. Hit <laughs> Dan Doodle. <laughs> this is what Dan Doodle looks like in case you're curious. Um what am I looking at? Why does it have a human face? Why does it look like a poodle and a sheep at the same time? It's the legendary version of Mangy Mutt. <laughs> Just the face alone is what got me. <laughs> And unlike Dan Doodle, Mangy Mutt is able to evolve into Multi Mutt. <laughs> okay, at least that kind of makes sense. In the sense of, like, a Japanese version of, like, uh, Cerberus. If it was just two heads instead of three. So, I mean, it's not crazy. At and least it also, makes sense. Like, Boohoo, it all has an. It has a palette swap called Sir Beerus. Oh. <laughs> Sir Beerus. Uh, creative nameplate, but too obvious. Uh, it's like, yeah, Sir Beerus. It's like Cerberus, but it's Sir Beerus. And it's like, okay. You get one point for creativity, but still it's pretty obvious. Uh. Oh yeah, there was a robot version of this too. A robot version? Robomutt. <laughs> okay. Just because of the Robus Cube, that reminds me of the um, Cartoon Network 
a TV series of, uh... I completely forgot about Gentle Mutt. I forgot what that robot's name, but... Oh, God. Yoke Watch got really weird. Apparently! <laughs> Apparently! Uh... But uh, in the highlight reel, I'll mention the uh, robot that I'm referring to. But that's what I was getting vibes from. But the gentleman <laughs> dog. <laughs> Gentle mutt. Oh, Lord almighty. Uh, well, next to Pokemon and Digimon, we now have a third one that we're making reference to. Yo, okay, watch. Uh, your knowledge goes beyond that of anybody else's. Well, I wouldn't necessarily say that. Thanks. I sure owe you one. It makes for interesting content, considering the fact that, you know, my knowledge wouldn't go as far as that, except for just Pokemon and Digimon. But even I wouldn't have gotten as far as to come up with, like, oh, hey, this is from this and stuff. Really? You mean we clobbered them? Well, they did. And I wouldn't necessarily say that they were clobbered, like, by hand. They were clobbered by a giant freaking keyblade with a bell attached to it. No. Nice to meet you. Say, fellas, this is Sora. And it doesn't matter when we met, once we make a friend, we're friends for life. And I'm Goofy. Mm. Friends for life. Now, we've got to go protect the princess. Donald? And of course, because this is the king undercover, hey, wait. this is in a time loop, gonna let me come along? they don't recognize but Sora at all. all. Correct. With danger. All the more reason I should help. When the it's probably for the better, because could you imagine if Donald and Goofy are like, hmm. <laughs> Look, looks like you're the person that had the keyblade. <laughs> that would have made for a very confusing plot line. <laughs> yeah. Pardon me. Excuse you. So was it ever explained why exactly a lot of the regular musketeers in the movie were just goofy clones? I... I couldn't tell ya. And why the turtle clearly sounded like Jose Carioca? <laughs> that was a choice. That was a choice. So... <laughs> that part I can't explain. That was a choice that they made. But as for the whole why was everyone looking the same, I really couldn't tell you. Because it's clear that they had other uh, creatures they could have picked, like pigs, obviously. Probably a few chickens in the process, but I don't know why it was just all dogs. Unless you want to make the reference of they're technically protecting something, so they have to be guard dogs. And I'm like, really? You went with that joke? Eh... At that point, the developers would have been like, what, you want a guard pig or a guard chicken? I mean, have you heard of a battle boar? <laughs> <laughs> and I already made the comment about rooster fighting. <laughs> it makes all the more sense. <laughs> Hell, I would have taken Horus's appearance being in the likeness of the Musketeers. That would definitely work, too. He could have been looked at like the uh, general of the Musketeers that has no idea that Pete is evil. Let's get right down to your inaugurary mission. Bodyguards to Princess Minnie. Uh. Some nefarious nincompoop has got it out for her, see? And it's your job to personally keep her safe. Somebody's after the princess. Tell on us! So is this established that it's the same Pete from 
Disney Town. I imagine it is. Three of us are ready for anything. <laughs> Don't worry, Donald's real brave, and Goofy's clever. And while I may be small, I've got the heart of a musketeer. All for one, and them for all. All right. Yeah. Yep. Come on. Yeah. Up, uh, teapot. You're a little too big. No, it's yeah. just... no I, I, I want to open the chest for you. <laughs> that would have been cute if they opened it for you. I imagine Sean would just ram himself into it. <laughs> <laughs> Sheep's like, uh, I can't reach the chest, so I'm just gonna open it with my head. Yeah! <laughs> I'm gonna open it with brute force. <laughs> uh. You bet I'm continuing with that pun from last time. <laughs> uh, it's still funny. There it is, right there. A dream eater. Bad guy. Bad guy. Is this like one of those escort missions? Not completely. So, is the T-Rex about as big as it is in this boss form? Not as that, not that big. It's about as big as the elephant, I'll say. Okay. I think it's just big just because of the boss. I will say, if the Three Musketeers movie had stuff like this in it, it would have been a lot more interesting. Yeah, it's like, how did a dinosaur get here? <laughs> At that point, we would have had the excuse of adding in that little joke from Meet the Robinsons. Like, <laughs> First appearance of the Beagle Boys. Yep. As far as we wear, only appearance. God damn it, they're using this music again! <laughs> we thought we escaped from its wrath, huh? I will promise you, I think, uh, with the peep boss that we'll be fighting later on, this will be the only time we'll actually have to hear it. Sora. I'm sorry. It fucking better be. <laughs> <laughs> I am so sick of that godforsaken song! <laughs> I remember when you were making that complaint, I'm like, should I tell him now or wait until later? <laughs> You know, while we're at it, how many times does it be, how many times is it played in Kingdom Hearts 3? Let's just get it over with. Hey, look, Mickey. You know? I want to say maybe at least once, but I can't remember. They at least do redo some of the songs in Kingdom Hearts 3. In order to fit like the theme around the world or the fight and stuff. Like so, I know they I re 
I recall they did make multiple versions of Tensions Rising. Yeah, they've done... Because I actually looked up the soundtrack. They've done Tension Rising twice, but in two different versions. And I assume one of them is for Marluxia, because it's titled under Reaper's Revenge. Yeah. And what's weird is that technically... Technically, in terms of how the sound sounds... Uh, sounds confusing, and I, I get it, but... In terms of the sound of the music, they've done the uh, Organization 13 boss fight. Um, it's not the first appearance, but it's like the second one where you fight it with uh, Saldan and uh, Dimex. That one's been used like three different times, but they were all different variances. Oh great, it's a time mission. Hopefully this won't take as long because Teacup is helping us here. I was gonna say, maybe we should have done this when the gauge was filled up. There we go. We did it just in Ooh. time. Yeah. With one second. It's like, whoo, that was a little bit close. But yeah, I was gonna say, if we did that with the gauges filled up, we could have probably finished them off with, with Teacup's ability. That is true. We could have. I thought it was going to be another case of hide and seek. Wow, they even thought about it with the chef. Because the Three Musketeers is, to my knowledge, a tale that takes place in France. <laughs> they were like, hmm, let's make hence this even why, more obvious. Hence why when Pete says, I'm the king of all friends, I feel, I feel like, like eating a snail. <laughs> uh, I don't know which joke is my favorite. It was either that or just the continuation of hearing the opera singing in the background. And Pete's like, that little dib's starting to grow on me. Either He's king of friends. Why the music stop? And then there's the aforementioned whenever they got Donald in that little guillotine thing and almost about to win, and Donald's like Pete, and Pete's like I'm in such a good mood today. <laughs> there's just so many great moments in that film. Oh gosh, I could easily make a video of like why I love the Three Musketeers. What exactly is stopping you? Guess I've never really done like a film uh, review type thing, you know? But then again, you gotta remember too, copyright is very tricky to get around. Even if you just use images? I know Fossil's Minion did that with his series Bluster Mess when he covered Phantom Menace. I guess I could try it. You know? And then to those who are subscribed to his Patreon, they get to see the thing with motion picture. Oh, okay. That makes sense, then. I think I'm I might... sure you have a Patreon, don't you? Huh? Do you have a Patreon, by chance? No, nah, I've thought about it. It's just one of those things where it's like, I wasn't for sure if I should or shouldn't. Because there is always that subject of money... But it's like one of those things where I would first take care of everything that needed for the channel first. You know what I mean? Like, for example, if I did start a Patreon, which I have actually questioned myself about doing it. Um, if I ever did start a Patreon, I would set up goal tier lists of, like, what all was required before anything else. Like, obviously paying for a new PC. I definitely wouldn't mind upgrading to a new camera. I've, I've had this cam- not the webcam, mind you, but my actual camera, I've had it since I started YouTube. This particular YouTube channel, mind you. So, and it's technically Delmar's, so he's used it a little bit longer afterwards, so it's, it's pretty oh, up there. so it's older still. Yeah, it's probably up to 10, maybe even 12 years, I want to say. It's a good camera record. I mean, you could tell by looking at the videos that I do on YouTube. It's good quality. 
But it's one of those things where it's like, I wouldn't mind upgrading to a new camera, especially the one that Cynical uses on his channel. It looks good. And then I actually did research because um, technically Elgato has like a cable link to where you can hook up into the computer and to your uh, camera. And it acts as a webcam. Ooh. And I've actually looked into a cheaper alternative because that one in particular is 150 bucks. And I thought to myself, I was like, there's got to be a cheaper alternative. I've found cheaper alternatives in the past. There's got to be one. And sure enough, I found a couple for like 20 bucks. So it's like, you know what? It's worth a shot. Instead of having to oh. buy a new webcam, just use a camera. By the way, I... After this fight, I sent something in call context. You know how you ended up including that bit that I made in the highlight reel? Yeah. Shante? I made this a couple of days afterward, because I was on a bit of an editing high. Ah, okay. <laughs> and it's at this point I'm realizing, like, should I consider making YouTube poops? Probably should, depending on how funny this is. Oh, how are we ever going to pay Sykes off with a... Oh. Hang on, it's a little bit shoddy here. Oh... How are we ever going to pay Sykes off with a... A pussycat? Barry the pussycat! <laughs> that was very well done. Thank you. That that little part right there is very YouTube push. Uh, pu uh, oh, God. Yes, YouTube push. I was about to say YouTube puss, but then it's like, no, that's wrong. <laughs> Uh, it's like the legend of Puss in Boots. Puss in Poop? <laughs> God. I also made this on my Twitter. How familiar are you with Jim Henson's construction site? Not very familiar, but I'm sure if I saw it, I'll recognize it. Especially from Del Mar's end, so let's take a look. They can fetch another batch. That's what they do. They drag, they drop, they can take it to the top. That's what they do. Thomas! He's the cheeky one. James! He's fame, but lots of fun. You can skim through the Pulls a man on time. Gordon! Do what now? You could skim to the part where it says Toby. Ah. <laughs> okay, now it's really quiet. The volume is definitely off for some reason. But awkwardly enough, the music works. So this part I found out after the fact, but in the DaVinci Resolve, there's a way to pitch up audio in the program. So I basically opened this up in Audacity for nothing to pitch it up. So you could music stuff. Wow, that's that's impressive, Mac. That's very impressive. You're almost as, well, now nah, you're probably more so compared to me. You're more versatile with using different programs. Because in my case, I use a combination of Photoshop, um, Adobe Premiere, and MS Paint when it comes to making my content and stuff. With me, it's MS Paint, Paint.net, Audacity, formerly Movie Maker... And currently, DaVinci Resolve. And if I'm recording any game stuff, I have OBS. It's still pretty impressive. Also, I was not expecting Sora to almost get killed. Like I said, don't fuck with an elephant. 
Speaking of... Elephant versus elephant. That worked out very nicely. So wait, if we're in France, would that mean that it's Elephant versus Elephant? <laughs> would the Thomas sheep in this place be called Sean? <laughs> I think so, yeah. <laughs> Would the bear be called Cinnamon? <laughs> it probably would be, actually, now that you mention that. Although, would it be Escargoon or Gon? Escargoon. <laughs> I mean, his name's already a play on the word escargot. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, what happened to that one dream eater I was fighting? Oh boy, here it comes. Dude. There it goes. I forget, is there ever a Beagle Boy that was on the good side? If there was, I've never been known. And here comes the trauma. Hang on, I got better music than this shit. <laughs> Max's like, let me fix this. Teapot beat him senseless. That worked out quite nicely. <laughs> that worked out very nicely. <laughs> Twitter, I not Twitter, Twitch, I swear to God, if you copyright that. If I'm not mistaken, with the exception of a few shanties here and there, I'm pretty sure the majority of it is public domain that they were using, isn't it? Much like how Ren and Stimpy is. I think. We'll find out. Alright. We can do this all day. Wait, Sora. Not any suggestions, Goofy. Jump out the window. <laughs> Awkwardly enough, it works. Take 
Teapot. <laughs> no, like they're the ones that got rid of the Beagle Boys. And we were the one that pummeled them. <laughs> Whoa. Do you see that? Hmm? What's up? Hey, you! Not so far! Uh, Goofy, where are you going? What's the matter, Sora? Hold on! Oh, Mickey, Goofy just sort of took off. Goofy's gone? But why would he leave his post? <laughs> Not you too, Donald! What do we do? It's a disaster! Calm down, Donald. Start from the beginning. I honestly was hoping that they would use that little sound bit thing where he explains the whole thing, and Sora's just like, For once, Donald, I didn't understand a word you just said there. <laughs> what? It's so funny. Like I said, there's so many different moments. <laughs> And Donald just flexes oh, the sailor suit. <laughs> yeah, we're in this together. Come on, we'll be right beside you. <laughs> Hmm. Oh. He'll be back. I know it. Aw, oh, thanks, Sora. So this captain guy's the Yeah, he's gonna end up having a talk with a turtle. <laughs> and break the shit out of his banjo thing. <laughs> <laughs> a stranger looking to be endangered. You mangle these yardsticks. Captain Heat, by the power vested in me as a musketeer, I arrest you, mister. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> well, how's about this? By the power invested in my fist, I clobber you! Oh, Mickey! And Sora got clobbered by a rabbit. Donald. Together again. <laughs> Where's Mickey? Gee, it's well to be together again, 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 again. <laughs> oh, come on, we gotta go save him. What are you saying? You and Goofy wouldn't have come back if you weren't ready to save. Wait a minute. We're friends. Pete tried to drown Sora too. Uh, mostly Mickey, and just left Sora there in the middle of the entire thing. Honestly, I think that's one of the darkest things Pete's ever done. And one of the darkest things that we've ever seen follow up with that is the fact he almost succeeded in killing Mickey. Almost, yeah. If it wasn't for Donald, and somehow Goofy surviving all of it, wooing Clarabelle in the process. Yeah. 
Okay, now that's just weird. <laughs> what? I just heard uh, MJ right there, so. You have something to say to the audience, MJ? Harry purring. If I moved you away from the table, <laughs> of course you do it when it's not on the mic. Yeah. Come on, yell for me. Yeah. MG. Stop doing this until you actually meow. <laughs> MJ's yeah. like, no! <laughs> MJ! Come on! Silent ones. <laughs> MJ's like, but those are my best ones. I know those are your cutest ones, MJ, but I want you to actually make a meow for the audience, okay? <laughs> And she left. <laughs> oh, and of course you do it when it's away from the fucking mic. <laughs> Cat 
hats. Uh. So how much of a bill would you say that Sora is racking up in property damage? Uh, well, considering this is technically a dirt started island, probably not that much. Like, would you put up property damage to a building that was already being slowly destroyed over time? I thought this was the dungeon. Well, it is kind of the remote island dungeon. But then again, I guess that all depends on if there were other prisoners aside from Mickey. There's a skeleton there of a knight that was originally called Oswald. Heh. <laughs> uh. Use the link. Yeah, it took out three so far. You mentioned how there was a version of this thing that was based on a character from The World Ends With You, right? Correct. Would the Switch version of this game have that as well? I imagine all of the versions uh, would have it. At least in terms of like uh, the HD versions, of course, mind you. Which were what? What else would have been, been distributed outside of that? It would have been dish because this should have also come out on Xbox as well as PC, and then of course ultimately the Switch. So it should be available for all platforms, if I'm not mistaken. Currently, right now. Right. And we got a slide roll. Yep. I'll make. Traversing a little bit nicer. Okay, I know that we're going to max out a bunch of the others, but I kind of want to still keep Teapot on the team because of how much of a help they've been. It's been very helpful. Like, if we couldn't keep Pinata, we can at least keep Teapot. Okay. Especially considering how helpful Teapot's been, so I, I can agree with that. Thank you. I have to say, Teapot has definitely been very helpful this time around. I mean, it's been helpful before, but daggum. If it ain't pulled in, it's punches, so... It's not dead weight. I mean, depending, it definitely will take us a while. But at the same time, we'll keep them. Thank you. Almost there for that one. And still quite a lot more for MJ. Good lord almighty.
Although the second we get to unlock uh, the lion or the tiger, I definitely want to swap out uh, for those because they're going to have an ability called Mega Flare that's going to be extremely helpful against some of the enemy parties. Especially for when we enter in the... So, we'd have Teapot and the Tiger. Yeah. Or Lion, whichever comes first. I forget which one you get first, uh, in terms of, like, progression-wise. Aw, oh, fellas. We're not even real musketeers. Wrong. You are real musketeers. And don't let anybody else tell you you're not. Only what kind of heart it is that beats inside of you. You know what? You're right, pals. When the bunch of us stick together, we can accomplish anything. Pete said he was headed for the opera house, and that's where we'll find Her Majesty. Come on, musketeers. We've got a princess to rescue! They're using the Olympus music. <laughs> I just realized that now after I was not focusing on MJ. <laughs> hey, over there! Boy, those nitwits! The boss is gonna be mad! Harry! <gasps> episode title wise it just be meow mj <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, we did it right on the dot. Wait, it was a time trial? Yeah, 20 seconds. Oh. See? <laughs> that was the Fleeting close. Fancy. That was the closest we've ever been. And I wish not to be any closer than that. Come on. Open chest. To be fair, we did have those giraffes, and they can hit hard depending. Yeah. 
So a thing just came to realization as to why the T Rex was here. Okay. Pokemon X and Y had a region that was based on France, and in it we got a T Rex Pokemon. Okay, interesting. Although, what, what day, well, not day, what year did Dream Drop Distance come out? On the 3DS? I honestly forgot. Because Pokemon X and Y came out October 2013. That would have been very interesting if that ended up being the case. I'll have to look that up. It's almost been 10 years. Alright, let me look it up real quickly. Because I honestly forgot. Let's see. Okay, so it says here that it came out March 29th, 2012. So it so it came first. Yeah. Does that mean Pokémon ripped off Square Enix? We'll call it even. Because I'm not sure, because unless there was like a major museum that opened up in France where they discovered like a T-Rex skeletal size or something like that, I'm not sure, because why would it reference a T-Rex in, Fran in uh, a French-based uh, area? Probably because of the monarchy. Could be it then, yeah. <laughs> I'm tired of hearing this fucking song. Look out. Huh? Huh? Riku. Riku saved us. He's been by our side. All right. Musketeers, get the princess to safety. I'll handle it. Nope, it's still going. Yep, he's still going. Thank <laughs> you. 
And now we finally get to fight Pete. Oh wow. Uh that's not supposed to happen. What? What? Yeah, he's supposed to be on the sun or moon, not floating in the midair. I took some pixie dust from Neverland. <laughs> Okay, he's back on the sun. That was funny. Oh gosh, that was just weird. <laughs> and down he comes. And down he goes. Was timed perfectly. T R perfect. Just absolutely on par, perfect timing on everything, and it's like, wow. Uh. <laughs> I hope that song doesn't get copyrighted, cause that's a that was that was beautiful. That whole moment right there. Why is it always in the sky? I don't know. And now is Riku's turn. Which hopefully we should have enough ingredients to make something new. Like the T-Rex? We'll find out. So let's take a look here. We can make the uh, drill sigh. The T-Rex. Okay. We haven't got any of the ingredients necessary. <laughs> oh man, I had a perfect name to give the 
Rhino if we were f to obtain it as Sora. Huh. Meringue. Interesting. So we we have a lot we have a lot opened up to us right now. So Fishbone, Mimi Bunny, Drill Sigh. What's your pick? But yeah, this is this is why I was thinking meringue for the drill sigh. Oh, from uh, Animal Crossing. Yep. Okay. I mean, we can technically uh, give it a paint job and have it a different color, so we could do that. Enrique, you could probably get away with it again, with, <laughs> like he did with sushi. <laughs> we'll do that then. Oh. Okay. Because why not? So I was like, but she's named after the food! <laughs> How are you not hungry? Uh. Uh. Let's see. The name's right there, so... Yeah, that's what I was using. I was like, I'm cheating. Alright. There's one. Now then, let's see what we can make. Oh. Okay. And there's the other one right there. The dark quack. The drac quack. Oh, we can make a french fry. Should we save that for Sora or go ahead and just make it with Riku? Fuck it. I like to see a pissed off Sora. <laughs> I mean, after all, we did make Meta Knight as Sora, so it's a trade off. Yep. <laughs> so let's see here. Is it R E? It's. F R E N C H. F R Y. Perfect. Okay, now I'm starting to get hungry. <laughs> It's funny, too, because I know Delmar was wanting me to fix something else, but I was, like, thinking to myself, you sh he sure he doesn't want chicken and fries? <laughs> uh, let's make one more. Okay. Because we still, we've got open... Well, what was that? That would be a Pega Slick, if I'm not mis... Yeah, Pega Slick. I have the perfect name for the Thunder Raft. When we get to that one, I'll I'll let you find out. Okay. Wait, was that the Thunder Raff? Yep, that's the Thunder Raff, and we don't have the ingredients at the moment. Oh, shit. That is a lot of ingredients. I mean, we're definitely getting options now, but just not a lot of ingredients. Although, after the stream, I may have to grind out some ingredients if we're going to make half of this stuff. Because now that we've got access to the Land of the Musketeers, we should have access to... At least 
the other half of the Dream Eaters that we can make. Uh, the other half. Oh, Lord Almighty. What would you describe as the other half? Well, for a while, we've been seeing kind of like almost the same thing, you know what I mean? Yeah, like the Kamari Bat, the Meow Wow, Prickle Mane. And now we're seeing like uh, the T-Rex, uh, the Pegasus looking ones, the Giraffe, and eventually we'll see the uh, Dragon looking one as well. Hmm. So that's what I mean by the other half. Oh, we can make uh, uh, the ducky, uh, ducky goose. Uh, sure. Let's make that one, I guess. Uh, do we want to name that after one of the uh, one of the? Uh, oh, I don't know if I'm not sure if any of the yokai names fit it. I mean, I could probably see Flumpy. Okay, yeah, that's definitely a Flumpy. <laughs> Max's like, I'm not sure if that would work. And then he's like, no, that definitely would work. Okay, hang on, and I'll pull up that name real quickly. Let's see. You know how to spell Lumpy, right? Yeah. It's basically that, but with an F in front of the L. Okay. Oh, nope. There we go. Flumpy it is. Flumpy Dumpy. <laughs> uh, and there's still a shit ton more we could make, but right now we just run out of ingredients. I'm gonna let you name the tub Gwinnace. Okay, I'm definitely gonna have to look up that name for the uh, penguin, but I definitely want to name it that. Let's see, what level does this have to be? 30. Okay, we'll have to see what level is that. Okay, so five more levels. Maybe you might make it, uh... Oh, no. No, 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 no. <laughs> Didn't realize what world we were hovering over. There we go. That's better. But yeah, we'll... Hopefully we'll get to level 30 with that one. Boss time! Hey, it's the Octo Rock again. I think it would have been kind of cool if, for the final mix version of this. Okay, I know that I've been comparing Yokai Watch stuff to this a lot recently, but some of the bosses in Yokai Watch that originally started out as bosses became befriendable in subsequent games. Huh. That would've been I cool. I can totally see this being a thing that would've been befriendable. That'd be cool. I believe this one's got a second phase, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, I knew it. Oh, so now it's a squid.
Okay, am I the only one that thought that squids had six legs because of SpongeBob? No, I thought they had six legs too. Like, and it wasn't until Splatoon where I managed to come to the realization that they have ten arms. Huh. To say, where are the boulders at? Oh gosh, it's using all four arms. <laughs> There we go. I was gonna say, it's like, how long am I gonna have to put up with this one? It's like, whoo! He almost had me a couple of times. <laughs> this was before I met your mother. <laughs> I'm so glad we came back to that joke. <laughs> that guy has a man. I mean, we were playing as Rico. They dipped after that one. Oh my gosh, I, I swear by the end of all this, I'm going to have a literal highlight reel that's titled How I Met Your Mother. And it's just Riku in front of uh, Pete talking about Maleficent. <laughs> and Riku's got like an upside down fi uh, uh, frown face and he's like, what the frick is going on okay. here? I, I'm, I'm just going to spoil what I was going to call the Thunder Wrath. Maleficent? Yeah, and I would have thought it'd been pro. I, I thought it would have been poetic if we had the Thunder Wrath on our side at that in the heat fight. Uh, at that point, we have to come up with a name for uh, uh, a character that looks like Pete, at least. Maybe the lion, because cats. Okay, that works. I mean, he was a lion s model in uh. Uh, Pride Land, so that works. Speaking we'll... of lion, that thing straight up looked like Sogaleo. Hmm. But to say, where'd it go? I ran away! You guys are being mean! <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. Oh man, I can't wait for that combination and then have it in the party. <laughs> oh gosh, that's gonna be so funny. Oh my gosh. Comic gold. It's as gold as the hallways you're in. Well. 
You failed the challenge. Nah, I completed it. Then why did it say zero out of three? Because it was to take no damage. Oh. Yeah, it's like... Leading fantasy. Yeah, no more than three uh, damage. Or get hit uh, more than three times. You get what I'm saying. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, if we get our hands on this thing, we need to make it jet black. Hopefully I've got enough black to do it. Oh, gosh. I forget, was this one called the Sarah Terror? I believe so, yeah. So then is there a set timeline for this game like there was for Chain of Memories? But not Chain of Memories. Okay, technically Chain of Memories, but I meant to say Birth by Sleep. Uh Dream Drop Distant takes place literally after uh Kingdom Hearts 2. I'm talking about like the events in game. The events in game? Like who visits which world first? Oh, um, I don't think... Because going off of how things are here, with it being in the dead of the night, I feel like this happens right in the middle of Mickey almost being drowned. That would make sense if that was the case, but considering it's a Sora and Riku story, and they interchange and stuff like that, I imagine it's like kind of a free-for-all thing hmm. because Joshua mentioned it in uh, when we were in uh, Traverse Town where the times don't seem to match up so I can imagine this could have happened at any point in time either this could have happened way before Sora got What's to encounter Pete and crew on the stage or it could have been way after also that is very well crafted uh, cra well crafted dummies. Craft mac and cheese. Pete. You get off lucky this time. <laughs> Hopefully that will be the last time, I think. I could be wrong. If not... <laughs> Mech is fully loaded. I got a cat on my own and I'm not afraid to use her. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, 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 okay. Game does not like chairs. I heard the playback, and it sounded like you said cherries. <laughs> that could very well be the case. Hi, 
I heard the meow. <laughs> the one with the utensils is like, <laughs> oh, that's funny. I promise I wasn't trying to be offensive when I was doing that. Was one of those dream eaters a griffin? Yeah. Huh? All right. Excuse Is me. Someone. <gasps> Minnie. Oh, oh, thank you for saving me. Where are you going? Musketeers. What happened? Tell me what I can do. Who are you? Riku. Mickey's my friend. Oh, Riku. The stage has been rigged with a machine to lure Mickey and the others into a terrible trap. If we could only find something to control the device from here. Uh, pretty obvious. <gasps> Lucky I remembered. Look what I nearly forgot. Eh? Why is the box sans mouth? Oi, quit messing around. The boss is losing his patience. Hey. Okay, I did not hear the playback until now, so I thought he said sans. <laughs> Release me! This instant! Actually, it's time to say Von Jern. <laughs> oh, don't you lose any sleep over it, princess. I'm just gonna seize the throne and rule happily ever after. after but I thought you hate happy endings. <laughs> <laughs> if they're against his favor, of course. And that's why the real you won't be the one doing the naming. I got myself another stooge to take the stage. All you gotta do is keep your royal mouth nice and shut. A double? Mickey and the Musketeers will stop you! Oh, never you fear, Princess. Those chowder heads will be out of the picture real soon. So, how are we looking, boys? I okay, boss. Test run's done. We'll flatten them like crepes. Good. Now, you must hold on to that thing no matter what. If it you don't mind, your highness, we have a I thought crepes were already flat. Stage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> be curtains soon. <laughs> curtains. I love it. Oh, lovely. Poison. Because the love is so absolutely much. I thought it was acid. It might be acid. I'm not sure. I just know it's poison because one of the first enemies we encounter does cast poison. And was it that color? I believe so. I kind of fail to see why breaking a thing of poison would stop it from spreading. You need a magic pot, so that's probably one of the reasons. 
Speaking of poison, hi, Pinata. <laughs> oh, by the way, I need to make it an addendum. We didn't name Pinata as Riku. We did that as Sora. Oh, we did. I was watching back through the highlight reels, and yeah, that was Sora's. No, <clears throat> that was Sora's dream meter that we ended up naming. You were about to say nobody, weren't you? I was kind of short of breath for a moment. Ah. Whoa, that was weird. Hey, you remember when I said we could dedicate an entire stream to just level grinding? Yeah. You mind if we did that next time we streamed? Sure, if that's what you want to do. Well, I, I just wanted to know if that's what you wanted to do. It's your stream, after all. Ah, okay. Fair point. <laughs> Is it something you want to do? <clears throat> Pardon me. Uh, almost lost my voice there. DJ Groove's just pile drived into ya. <laughs> oh, good lord almighty. But uh, as I was saying, I was trying to say I got lost for some reason. So let's see. Um, ah, so there is, okay. Uh, excuse me. Okay, so why? Oh, I bet I know why. Oh, that's one reason. Is he saying voila? Yeah, I think or, so. It sounds like it's saying... It's either that or... One up! Well, we defeated one. Now we just gotta find the other two. You think the Beagle Boys would have befriended some of these Dream Eaters? I can imagine the smallest one befriending one of them. The other two would have been like, Hey! Stay away from that thing! We don't even know if it's dangerous or not! Oh, but it seems cute and harmless. Let's keep it and name it. Which one would you say he think is cute and harmless? Hmm. Not sure. I want to say for the sake of comedic effect, it's the most dangerous one of them all. <laughs> so the T-Rex. 
It would definitely make sense for why we fought it at the carriage. You know, I just realized I might be right on the mindset that stuff is actually acid. Yeah? You really- you begin to really trip balls every time when you enter it. Yeah, I, I started noticing that too. I wasn't losing health. It was just visually, so maybe I was wrong. For science, let's just stand in it. Okay, well thankfully there's another room where we do enter in some acid, so... Of course, going in with a full HP bar. Get yeah, one second. This one's about down. I just realized something with the color. What's that? Maybe it's not affecting your HP, but it's affecting your drop meter. Oh yeah! It did, didn't it? Hang on. Because the drop gauge did react. Yeah, it did. Huh. Wait, why is it going up? Wait, is it going up? Yeah, 1.9. 2.0. 2 2.1. Okay, um, so it's not poison. It's not a bad effect. It's just very trippy on the eyes. You glad we figured that out? Yes, pretty interesting. I did not realize that that drop gauge would just be an effect it and not the actual health. It's good to know. And we beat all three of them. That was easy. Hang on, I, I need to do something now that you brought that up. Take you got a sound bit? Hang on. <laughs> MJ's bothering me again. You've got the button, don't ya? Oh, man. I wish. All I heard was the click noise, and I thought to myself, no. And then I heard it. I was like, he has it! But no, okay. It's just the part of the sound effect. Okay. Uh, but still. <laughs> you know what? I need to look that up eventually, just for prop's sake, you know? If I entered in a boss, and all of a sudden it went down easy, I'd be like, that was easy. <laughs> yeah. And going off the track record with Riku, that would be used a lot. This one might be a little bit tricky, though. It's basically a dimension mole. They just never want to interdimensional. Make this yeah. Honestly, I kind of like the design of this one. It's kind of the same way with the, uh... Hokey Monkey. But in this case, it... it... Holy moly. That, that's really what you're gonna call it? Holy moly? Apparently, they were just that easy to name it. I mean, I'm glad it's a pun, but... 
Like, really? You don't, even, you don't even make it have any tie to its powers. Especially considering the fact it is a dimension mole. Like, the name that I went with, Dementia Mole. That works. Because it's a play on the word dimensional. I just realized this thing's kind of a mole version of Mega Gengar. Mega Gengar? Oh, yeah, you're right. In fact, both of its powered-up forms are halfway into the ground. Huh. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Okay, never mind. It was easy to kill. Dagum, Riku, what the heck? Maybe you are uh, destined to be Keyblade Master after all. Because the one boss I thought was going to be a, a hassle wasn't a hassle at all. I mean, yes, we almost got ourselves killed in one point, but still, it went down relatively quick. Don't get cocky. Julius might still be hell. That could be true. It's like, I know Julius. He, 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 he does not want to sit still. How do you like that? Looks like I was right in the nick of time. Sora? Oh, hmm? They're safe. Oh, thank goodness. You truly saved the day, Riku. I see you're as brave as a royal musketeer. Musketeer? What is that anyway? <laughs> huh? They... You're right. And it does fit the moment. All for one and one for all. See, Riku's isn't in the sky. It's just at the ceiling. Or at least the wall. Wall for one. What? What was that? I sensed something was amiss nearly the moment Sora and Riku departed. Xehanort must have known what we were attempting before we even began. But you do know where they are. You must understand, this examination is in no way how the mark of mastery is usually found. However, in light of what they must do next, it was a necessity. If Sora and Riku complete their test by finding the seven doors corresponding to the seven pure lights, they will return home with a new power. At that point, they will both be true masters. However, the dangers make this more trial than test. But are they safe right now? So, does Zora learn the power of waking in three? Uh, towards the end he does, yeah. So at that point, he does become a master. At that point, yeah, I would imagine... Uh, at that point, if Sora was still around, Yang Sid would have acknowledged him for being a master by finally finding the power of waking. So, as you can see, the organization's members are complete. I wonder if anyone's ever made a cake in the likeness of that candle. I imagine they probably have. It's not exactly what you would call a complex design. It's just. The candle would be the complicated part, rather than the skull part. The candle's just all made out of fondant. Actually, yeah, you might be right. I can imagine someone that specializes in cake design could easily do that. 
That's not too far from imagination. And I think before we end the stream today, let's take a look at our Dream Eaters. And then we could probably make one or two. Oh yeah, we swapped out Cinnamon with Goomba, didn't we? Yep. <coughs> Pardon me. Excuse you. That is still quite a bit. Oh, we can at least expand this. Oh, we gotta link you? Okay. Oh, good lord almighty. I think we're gonna have plenty of these to do for grinding streams. Oh, yeah. Feeding time! Actually, DJ, you don't really need to eat. You got plenty of points. But he's the wingman! <laughs> oh, never mind, he's a skater now. <laughs> uh. Oh my god, I just realized something. What's that? Along with S. Cargoon, we have D to D and a Waddle D! Would this area... Would you say that there'd be an area like this in Disney Castle? Oh, this? Yeah, like the, the, the playroom for the Dream Eaters. I could definitely see it. It's not too crazy of the realm of possibilities. DJ Groups took the cake and ate it, too. Yep. Oh, good lord almighty. He definitely didn't need that. Although we got him completed now. We got a oh, we're gonna see Escargoon go, then. Yeah, he'll be the first one to be changed out. But we gotta link this thing up, so we'll have to have him in our party. Hopefully he'll have a good ability. Let's see. And then, what should we change Escargoon with? Uh, we got a lot of options. What about Blathers? Okay. Let's see what type of abilities Blathers has right off the back. <laughs> Blathers. <laughs> What'd I say? You said bladders! Oh, good lord. Blathers! Gosh! Time to take a piss! Uh, well, unlike with the others, this one looks like it'll be easy to get around, I think. <sighs> Oh, good lord. Oh, fuck me, Blue. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let's see, what level is DJ Groove's 28? I'm gonna have to do some grinding with this one. So, in other words, the next time we play as Riku, you won't be seeing DJ Groove. You'll probably see Goomba still, but sadly, we'll be changing off uh, DJ Groove with someone else, which, since we're here... Which one would you switch uh, DJ Grooves with? Um, because we got options. We got options. 
Flumpy? Okay. We will have uh, Flumpy uh, replace DJ Grooves for the next time, because I will be grinding for materials and obviously to level up Wait, DJ I Grooves. Next, I thought next stream was just going to be a grinding stream. I mean, we can if you want to. I was just thinking of jumping into uh, the uh, Fantasia that... world. Okay, we could probably do Fantasia next, and then after that it would be grinding stream. Yeah, because by... I, I want to say... I could be wrong, but I want to say... By the time we get to the Fantasia world, we should have access to pretty much almost... I say almost all of the Dream Eaters to where we can at least make them and stuff. So we could probably do that. Alright, unlock all the options. Yeah. So hopefully we'll do that. So anyway guys, we're signing off for the day and it's uh, me and Mech signing off. Bye! See you later. And I did not remember, mess up your name. <laughs> and remember, God made you special and he loves you very much. <laughs> uh, catch you later guys. Bye.